stuff like that, you know. And my conviction is so corrupt, it's, it's unbelievable, but... Kevin Lane, an infamous prisoner, served 20 plus years for the alleged murder of Robert McGill, a crime he denies to this day. Regarded as one of the toughest men to have navigated the prison dispersal system, housing the most dangerous men across the country, Lane has a fascinating and tragic story to tell. But what about his early years and some of the infamous moments that built a reputation that would come back to haunt him? The Paradise Club in London is a notorious venue that was ruled by imposing bouncers, many employed from an infamous bodybuilding gym. This night, Kevin, a young up-and-coming security boss and talented amateur boxer, was minding his own business, enjoying a drink, before an explosive clash erupted. Who better to tell the story than Kevin himself, who has given me permission to read the brutal encounter from his excellent book, Fitted Up and Fighting Back. Link in the description. I will give my verdict on the book and Kevin's remarkable story after this explosive fight. There's another story about the Paradise Club in North London. Some of the door staff set about a young lad that looked like a college boy from the countryside, most probably thinking he was an easy target. That lad was me. I was with Paul Cox and had just come from a rave party that I'd been running in a commercial yard at least. The Paradise is rough joint and is open all hours of the night and day. The doormen are, to say the least, large. Most of them are bodybuilders, some weighed in over 20 stone. Paul and I were sitting minding our own business, having a cup of tea in the coffee bar, when we were approached by two staff and asked if we had any drugs on us. I explained that we didn't. The ensuing conversation got rather heated, so I suggested it would be better if we stepped outside to discuss the matter further. Inevitably, one of the chaps in front of me threw a punch, and within seconds, the situation escalated into a massive free-for-all. Paul told me later that I was doing okay until even more dormant waded into the melee. I was in the middle of them throwing punches but taking a damn sight more than I was actually landing, but I wasn't giving up. They tried to manoeuvre me down a steep stairwell leading to what I think was the cellar. I knew if they threw me down there I was in real trouble. Two friends, Seb McFarland and Keith Dodsley, who also worked at the club, intervened at this point, allowing me to rally again and I prepared for round two. I club it, seeing that the odds were stacked against me, surreptitiously put a canister of CS gas in my hand. It was obvious to all who were looking on that the staff had taken a diabolical liberty. I told Sid and Keith, this lot have taken a liberty, and I'm going to even it up now. There were even more of them now, and they were lining up for the second wave of attack. I ran into them throwing punches and spraying gas, but the only trouble with gas is that if you're in a confined space, everyone gets it. It wasn't long before I was manhandled out of the premises, punching for my life, coughing and spluttering as the tears ran down my face. Outside, I faced a wolf-like pack again, and they were baying for my blood. I offered to fight them one at a time, knowing I could revert to Marquis of Queensby rules and move about in the space. A big lump called Craig stepped forward, complete with baseball bat, his eyes still watering from the gas. I closed the distance quickly before he could hit me with it. However, to my surprise, the crowd soon jumped in. This mini riot went on for a while, me singling one out, getting stuck in and getting jumped when I was doing okay. Eventually, a large, bald-headed chap, I think his name was Ron, who had been watching all this unfold, came down from the early morning market and put a stop to it, all making the doorman very aware that they were in the wrong. And then Sid stepped in between me and the crowd and said, that's enough. By now, I was exhausted and my lungs were full of CS gas. I'd been hit and coshed countless times. I sat on the curb trying to recover. I slowly eased myself up and looked straight at the pack and told them, I'm coming back for you lot. And then I left. This tale was soon being retold all over London. So that was Kevin Lane, fitted up, fighting back, an extract of an excellent book. It's important to know that for my money and for the majority of people who've looked into the case, Kevin Lane is definitely innocent. I would go as far as to say this is a severe and maybe one of the severest miscarriages of justice it took two attempts to charge him uh, to find him guilty at the beginning of the two trials and kevin says himself that he never expected to because he he wasn't guilty if you look at the evidence which he lays out in detail in his book there's hardly any evidence at all i just don't see 
how they could have come to that decision. We see it time after time after time. It is massive credit to Kevin Lane that his positive mental attitude, you know, that charismatic energy, he kept going for the most part through his prison sentence and all the battles he's had since trying to clear his name. He's come out and just carried on as before, setting up successful businesses, uh, creating a brand, appearing on the celebrities banged up, which is really good. It was a good insight into a little snapshot of what prison life's like. All these type of things that he's doing, got his own social media channels, been on numerous podcasts, um, like the excellent Matt Legs, who's been kind enough to allow me to use some of the footage just to help with the visuals for the video. Another great man who's self, self, selfless, helps anyone, you know. Is Kevin Lane an angel? No. Was he a bit of a lad when he was younger? Yeah. He was a very serious old man. He was in prison as well. He wouldn't suffer any fools. He wasn't a bully. But if you tested him, he had fast hands. Ferocious temper underneath, underneath it, if pushed. But a fair man. And I think that by reading the book, it makes you even more angry at the miscarriage of justice. So I really do encourage you to purchase it and to give it a read. Um, and you'll see where I'm coming from. But uh, yeah, big shout out to, to Kevin. He's got a audience with, with Matt Legg's going to be in with it as well. It's in Cambridge. I'm going to leave a link 